I am pissed off, so you better buckle up because it's time for another rant. Today I want to talk about the furry community, which is something that I haven't talked about very much on this channel, but I would like to, because furries are this wonderful group of people who pride themselves on being accepting to all people. It doesn't matter your race, your religion, your sexual orientation, furries are open and accepting to all people from all walks of life. But not this guy! Because if you're this guy, you have an entire Twitter thread dedicated to hating on you, with all these people leaving hateful, nasty comments, all working in tandem to get his ass cancelled off the face of the earth. The individual in question goes by a few different names, but I know him as Shadowblaze. And I would consider him one of my friends, I'd say. For reference, this is a picture that was taken in October of the three doctors. There's me dressed in the Plague Doctor outfit, Doctor Doctor, and Shadow Blaze is dressed as the fourth doctor, Tom Baker. Now, I have interacted with this individual on several occasions when I go to conventions, and he seems to be fairly friendly and nice. Now, I want to say that he's not one of my main friends, but he is someone that I would consider to be friendly. Recently, I was talking with him, and I expressed my desire to have worked on the Project Blue Book series, because I think it's one of my favorite shows on TV right now. And he actually sent me this picture, because he did work as a background actor for this particular show. As you can see, this is one of the main characters standing next to him. And for Shadow Blaze's privacy, I have decided to blur his picture. Because unlike some furries who think it's totally okay to just post pictures in a public forum of other furries, which if you're not familiar with the furry community, is a very big no-no. Unlike those furries, I actually have a sense of respect. I don't know Shadow Blaze too terribly well, but I know him well enough to know that he also has autism. In fact, a lot of furries actually have a variety of different mental disorders, such as myself with my own obsessive compulsive disorder. And the reason that the furry community is so open and accepting is because for a large majority of us, we are the types of people that were bullied and picked on our entire lives. I was bullied for 15 years of my life, all the way through elementary school, all the way through middle school, all the way into high school. These people get bullied and beat down by the rest of society for being weird and unusual or having mental disorders. So why in the fuck are we bullying ourselves now? When I saw this post in my Twitter feed the other day, I was so angry, I was about ready to start punching holes in the wall. This furry, who goes by Cursed Kitty on Twitter, starts posting about Shadow Blaze and her interactions. And I'm not going to read you everything that she says, because she goes on this big, huge rant. If you want, the link will be in the description below. You can go and read it for yourself. And so she goes on this rant about her interactions with Shadow Blaze. And to be completely honest with you, he didn't do anything wrong. And here, she even posted this private chat that Shadow Blaze had with her, where he says, Sorry I giving you the creepy vibes. If you don't like me at all, I'll avoid you. And then he sends her um, pictures that he took of her. And then she says, This is a huge line you have crossed. Actually, no, Cursed Kitty. It is the line that you have crossed. As someone who has been personally chewed out before for posting private messages in a public forum, regardless of whether or not those messages contain confident details, you are the one who has crossed the line by posting your private messages with Shadow on Twitter for the whole world to see. And in fact, this seems to be a reoccurring trend on Kirst's Twitter page. Because if you go to one of her more recent posts from within the last couple days, she starts posting private chat messages with somebody who commissioned her as an artist. I do not care what the artist said to you. I do not care what you said to the artist. I do not care if you have justification to warn people about him. But posting private messages, if anybody has anything confident that they want to keep to themselves, they better not share it with Cursed Kitty because she has no problem sharing your dirty laundry on Twitter for the whole world to see. She goes on to say, you were even willing to say these things in front of my BF. Now, she's referring to the comments that Shadow made. I am not here to defend whether or not Shadow did or did not do anything wrong. What I am here to say is that you are not doing anything right by posting these for the whole world to see. 
She goes on to talk about how she's in a closed relationship with her boyfriend, and I can respect that, but you must realize that not everyone is going to know that unless you walk around with the sign around your chest that says, I am in a relationship with someone. I also want to note the fact that these conversations between you and Shadowblaze that happened at Vancouver, you never specified whether or not you were in suit at the time. And I think you're missing a huge, huge thing here, which is that social cues come primarily from facial expressions. When you are in a big fursuit whose face doesn't move, how is Shadow supposed to know or pick up on your social cues that you're feeling awkward around him? Conversations are 90% body language and 10% words, and if you are unable to use your body language to express how uncomfortable you are, then you need to use your words and explicitly tell Shadow, I do not want you to talk to me, which I am not sure that you actually did. Another thing that you're missing is that people who have autism don't pick up on social cues. That's why they don't fit in well with the rest of society, because they don't understand when people feel awkward or uncomfortable around them. So in by doing this, Cursed Kitty has put out the message that the furry community as a whole is open and welcoming and accepting to everybody except those who have autism. Because if you're awkward and weird, then nobody wants to talk to you and we don't want you in our community. Is that the message you really want to be sending? Again, I want to make it very explicitly clear that if Shadow Blaze actually harassed you in any way, shape, or form, whether physical harassment, whether he verbally assaulted you, whether he inappropriately touched you, there is a specific set of steps that you need to take to resolve it, and posting about it on Twitter is not one of them. First of all, if anything like this happens to you during a convention, you need to talk to con staff immediately if you don't feel comfortable with someone. Because they will help you. And the reason I know that you did not handle this in an appropriate manner is because of this response from one of the con operations staff who says, I worked in con ops for Vancouver 2020. If people felt unease, no one made an incident report. We can't act on something or take action if we are not notified. And here's another response from one of the members of the convention staff who says, If things like this happen, please, please, please tell con ops. The more people speaking up about an individual, the more there is record of it. The more the ranger team and staff can keep an eye on them. I have my own creepy experiences with them. And Curse goes on to say, It is not always so easy to speak up. I barely had the guts to speak up, and I don't know what he is capable of. Okay, this post, this response from Curse, tells me that she may have genuine fear in Shadow Blaze's true intentions. And I can respect that! Which is why I want you to listen very, very carefully to what I have to say next, because I only want to say this once. There are genuine bad actors in the furry community. The reason I know this is because one of my best friends used to date one of them. He used to date a guy that had three arrest warrants out for him. One in the province of Ontario, one in the province of Alberta, and one in the province of British Columbia. This is a guy that was wanted for grand theft auto, extortion of money from other people, mostly within the furry community, and I'm not just talking a couple hundred dollars here. I know somebody, when I was living in Lethbridge, before I moved to Vancouver, this is when all this took place, I knew somebody that had $8,000 extorted from him by this man. At one point, one of the members from the local furry community was kidnapped and taken to British Columbia. I think at some point there was an attempt made to illegally cross the border. At one point, I got a phone call from this friend of mine who was dating the criminal, and he told me to go by his house in the city of Lethbridge to make sure that the place hadn't been broken into, because the criminal was dealing with a bunch of different gangs at the time who were using guns and so he was sure that these gang members had come by and basically trashed the house so i actually had to go over to his house to make sure that none of his stuff was stolen with the full knowledge that i might actually encounter a gang of thugs wielding firearms i don't want anyone to ever ever question my loyalty to my friends because i would die for some of them 
I also happen to know genuine psychopaths, bona fide rapists, and some guy who has stolen over $100,000 worth of intellectual property. <laughs> the dirt I have on some of you people, I could burn you. But I don't. But I don't. But I don't. Because nothing of value is gained in my life if I destroy your life if my life doesn't change. So where do you get off thinking that you can attack one of my friends in the vile and disgusting manner that you have done without any repercussions? I believe that this campaign against Shadowblaze put forth by Cursed Kitty is nothing more than a rage-induced furry cancel culture. Max Wolf says he's a known troublemaker and removed from events and groups for similar behavior back in 2008. Actually, no, Max. Shadow claims that he was banned from your group for allegedly taking a picture from across the street at a bus stop of one of the other group members, which he claims he never actually did. And even if he did take a photograph of one of the group members, I fail to see how that is a bannable offense considering the entire premise of your organization is to go to large public gatherings in six-foot animal costumes taking pictures with people. One of the things that Curse says was very disturbing about Shadow Blaze is that he asked her to purr for him. Now, like I said before, I'm not here to defend his actions. But you cannot tell me that if you dress up like a six foot tall kitty, that you cannot be asked to purr for people because that somehow disturbs you. I kid you not, I have seen grown ass adults rolling around on the floor playing with a ball of yarn. So for some reason, that level of immaturity within the fandom is totally acceptable, playing with a ball of yarn like a cat on the ground, but being asked to purr for is somehow, oh my god, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. You can't have your cake and eat it too. And if the worst thing in your life at this moment is some guy asking you to purr for him, you've got some serious problems, because the entire world is collapsing if you haven't noticed. Now this wouldn't be such a big problem if Cursed only had 50 followers or 100 followers, but she has over 3,000 on Twitter. So somewhere, you get off thinking that you can do shit like this because you've got 3,000 followers on Twitter? Curse strikes me as nothing more than a grade A, typical Gen Z clout chaser that would do anything for clicks and views. And if you really are who I think you are, somebody who would just cancel others just to get clicks and views, why don't you go and cancel me? In fact, I'll make it easy for you. There's my Twitter handle right there. You can cancel me all you bloody well like. I do not care whether you try to cancel me or not. Because I've already been nailed to the cross for things that I couldn't control. Because I have no problem staking my own reputation in this fandom if I believe that someone is genuinely the victim of hateful, bigoted cyberbullying. And I fail to see how this is any different than cyberbullying of any other form. Good luck trying to form an argument against why you hate me when you don't even know me. And the only thing you can say about me is that I made a YouTube video calling you out for being a vindictive cyberbully. And now because of you, Shadowblaze is essentially ostracized from the entire furry community because of his autism. If you go to his Twitter profile now, you can see that his tweets are protected. I bet a ton of people attacked him because of your bridge gating. I bet he cried for days, and I bet you don't even care. Even on this more recent post about the guy who commissioned her art, where she says, Do not harass this person! Well, what do you think is going to happen when you go posting private chat messages about him and telling people how awful he is? You know how the internet works. People get banned, people get blocked, all because of furry, rage-induced cancel culture. Even people that don't even know Shadow Blaze start blocking him, like this guy here, and this guy here. And just like you, I bet you didn't even try to know him. You never wanted to know him because you took one look at him and decided he's a creep. Now, I also want to make this very, very, very clear. If he has done something actually wrong to you, if he has physically assaulted you, if he has verbally assaulted you, if he has inappropriately touched you, if he has raped you in any kind, you need to go to con staff. If the con staff don't do anything about it, then you need to go to higher authorities. Go to the police if you think there's an actual problem. But you cannot tell me that because somebody is weird and creepy, they don't deserve to exist on this planet.
If you don't want Shadow to interact with you, then you block him. If you don't want him to message you on Telegram, then you block him. If he continues to do so, then you go to Constaff or you go to somebody else. You do not post about it on Twitter for the whole world to see. This entire situation could have, should have, would have been handled differently had Cursed Kitty actually have some sense of respect for other people. You could have gone to con staff, they could have dealt with it in private, there could have been a meeting between you and Shadow arranged, you could have blocked him on Twitter, you could have done a hundred other things, but you chose to post it publicly because you knew that it would get you clout. And the more and more and more I continue to hear out of Vancouver from the furry community, the more and more and more I'm glad I'm actually gone. Because it seems to me to be nothing more than a bunch of rage-induced, five-year-old children stuck in adult bodies who never learn to grow the hell up. And there are genuine good furries in the community of Vancouver people. There are a lot of people I still remain in communication with, and I'm not calling them out here. And you won't see me calling them out because they're not the ones posting stuff like this on Twitter. Oh my god. The furry community has made very, very, very good progress in many recent years to try and correct its public image because a lot of the public still sees us as these sexual deviants that are totally into bestiality when it's not true. And I really like the fact that the media is starting to shift its perspective of the furry community, but I think there's a whole underground can of worms here that people aren't talking about and it has nothing to do with sexuality or your sexual preferences or your weird ass kinks it has everything to do with mean-spirited evil bigoted hateful comments that get thrown around this community is supposed to be an escapism from the real world and all the crap that goes on in the real world. It's supposed to be some fantasy thing that we're all living together in perfect harmony and more people are just turning it into a big ass hate fest. That a uh, formerly mentioned criminal, the one with three arrest warrants, he was not a furry. He was a criminal posing as a furry and using the generosity and the kindness and the, uh, the vulnerability of the furry community to his advantage. I would not in a thousand years put Shadow Blaze and this criminal in the same boat. And yet the comments that are coming out about Shadow Blaze are just as bad as the stuff that was being said about this criminal. Shadow has done nothing wrong here but have autism! And luckily for my friend, he eventually came to his senses, the criminal was arrested, and everything turned out fine. But when you go inciting hateful, bigoted campaigns against people within the furry community who have not done anything wrong, that's when we start having issues. Alright, so how am I going to wrap this whole thing up? I want to state on the record that I do not hate Cursed for doing these things. In fact, if there is more to the story that needs to be told, then it needs to be told. If he has actually done something wrong to you, physically touched you inappropriately in any way, then I would be open to hearing those, those comments. But until then, I haven't seen him do anything wrong. So the solution I'm proposing is, if you're watching this Cursed Kitty, you are welcome, totally welcome to do a video with me. I'll do a Skype live stream with you, we can have an interview about this. If you don't want to be in, in a video, then maybe message me on Telegram or message me on Twitter. I'm open to having a conversation about this. I would like to hear your side of the story. Maybe you can explain to me some things such as whether or not you were in suit at the time. That would be really good to know, whether or not he did did actually touch you or whether or not it was just kind of creepy behavior around you and like I said you're totally welcome to come and we'll do a video you can message me if you want I'm not going to share any of your private messages that you send me because I've already learned the hard way that you shouldn't be posting private messages in public forums. I would recommend that you take down this post and everyone that made a hateful awful comment on that post please if you can reach out to Shadow and apologize to him. Nobody stopped to think about him being a person. He is a person who has feelings. And I bet he cried for days because of the awful, toxic, hateful things you all said about him. I'm the Jobless Coder. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like. I mostly do videos on coding. But this has been my rant about the furry community and my personal experiences within it. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next.